and welcome to a new video and this time we're going to check out a little prototype I've built for room detection and this simple example we're just using the object detection provided by Quest Camera Kit and as you can see I'm in the kitchen already so the scan determined that there are things that I have in my kitchen and I decided to flood my kitchen just to have a little visual effect showing that there is a room detected. So if I now switch rooms and go on to the next room you see that the object detection is running constantly and as soon as it detects electronic devices it first of all sets them on fire and it tells me that I'm in the living room now. So as burning things are a little bit spicy let's end this here and this shows how easy it can be done to create a small room detection application with the help of Quest Camera Kit and for those who don't know Quest Camera Kit Check out the GitHub repository from XRDevRob, who published all of his samples on this GitHub repository and even incorporated the Pass Through Camera API from Meta. Give it a star, check it out, and have a look at all the examples. I actually built it up on this repository. And let's dive a little bit into the code. So that's a very simple sample. There is an event for a boring room detected. A Prefab for water and fire, which can be spawned when a certain criteria is met, a short merge threshold to make it a little bit easier for the detected objects, and some flags to check if something is already spawned or not. And the main thing is if you have a look at the GitHub repository, there is actually a table with all possible objects that can be detected they're here and i just took these labels and divided them to more or less determine okay if i found object of that and that type i the possibility is very high that i'm in this and that room so you can see it here for the kitchen i decided whenever i find bottle wine glass cup blah 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 or chairs of blah 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 i'm either in the kitchen or in the living room and there is a small queue which I can always query to check, okay, what are my last detected objects? Am I in a specific room or not? And the rest is pretty simple. I have something to reset everything and my object is detected. I'll just enqueue it and check if my spawn details already contain the scanned object. If not, I'm adding it to my spawn details and then classify the room. So I'm just checking if one of the last scanned objects is part of the either kitchen object or the living room objects. And if that's the case, if the kitchen count is greater than the living room count, I'm in the kitchen. The other way around, I'm in the living room and so on. And of course, uncertain if there are objects detected which are not part of this check. And if this is the case, if the living room count is this, blah, 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 I'm spawning the game objects on the positions where I detect the objects beforehand. And the same goes for the kitchen. But in this case, the kitchen object is just one object. That's the water. And in combination with the scene depth of the Quest 3, I'm just spawning the water at the position where I'm standing. And the rest is occluded by walls. And every object is the depth sensor is detecting. So that's basically the very simple approach here you can of course make this way more complicated and way more feasible for um, high fidelity scans but for a first impression this should do the job and give you an idea how this works and for the panels that are following i just used a simple position following script and that's it so i hope you enjoyed this short little experiment I've done this in, I don't know, two hours or something. It's, as I said, pretty, pretty simple. And I just wanted to thank all my YouTube supporters. Thank you for being a member of the YouTube channel. If you're not already a member, please consider becoming a member too. And for everyone who's not aware, there is also a Patreon page in case you're not a fan of the YouTube memberships. So if you want to support the channel, but you don't want to become a YouTube channel member, you can consider becoming a Patreon member here too. You even get a small present when joining. So that's it for this video. Um, I hope you liked it. Please like, subscribe, 
and comment. Give me a few ideas what I should do next. And then I guess I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.